Hello and welcome to this tutorial slash reclass for using Raptor Visual Programming. This will be picking up where the last one left off. We have created a class called Soccer Player and we have instantiated this class. So what I'm going to do is start from scratch as far as all of this extra stuff goes. I'm just going to instantiate the class and that's it. I'll call this class or uh, this instance of the class Bob and it will be equal to a new soccer player. Alright, so what we're looking at today is constructors and methods. So if we go inside of the members uh, dialog for this class we see that we have one field of type integer and we have these other buttons uh, methods and constructors so what methods are are functions that exist inside of a class so they're actions that a an instance of a class can perform either on fields or properties of itself or of other objects or other instances. So it's things that it can do with data and it's usually specialized things. So if you want very specific tasks to be done, use methods to do this. Now if we look at Raptor itself, uh, remembering from the basics of Raptor, we know that we put all of our functionality that we want to happen when the program runs inside of main. It's the stuff that happens automatically. If I were to create uh, a method, if I go back to regular Raptor mode, uh, the, what, novice, I think it's called? The novice mode, <coughs> excuse me, and I create the subcharts that's the equivalent of making methods or making functions for a program, but those don't actually get ran until you call them. All right, so let's give an example here. I'm going to save this one. I'll save this as basic one, or I'll save it, save as file, save as basic one, and I'll come back to that in a second. So if I switch my mode to novice and I say, okay, I'm going to make a subchart and I'll call this my function. And inside of my function, I can just make an output. And it says, uh, I don't know, hello. Alright, and I press play on my application, well nothing happens. Because I haven't actually ran anything inside, I haven't actually called this function. So to actually make this uh, fire, you have to actually call that function. Alright. And this function represents what methods are. Alright, so the main function happens no matter what. That's all of the things that happen automatically whenever this is actually ran, okay? When the program is executed. No, I don't want to save. So if I go back to my basic one program, and I go and alter my soccer player. The methods will uh, function just like the subchart that I created in that last example. So I can say, for example, I'll call this method kick. Uh, kick the ball. Alright. Now this will only get called if I tell the program to call the method. But the constructor, it too is, or functions as a method, but it functions as the main method for any instance of this class. So things that happen automatically 
will, hap will happen inside of the constructor. The constructor of an instance will always share the same name as the class it belongs to. All right, so I called the soccer player method essentially, and what it is is it's the class name, the name of the class. So if I'm going to make an instance of the soccer player class called Bob, the constructor for Bob is called soccer player. So if I hit close and go into soccer player, actually this ordering is messed up, so I'll go and change that. Now the functionality will be the exact same, but it might make it a little bit confusing. You should make your constructors first. But that's just convention, it's not a requirement. So if I go into my soccer player class now, I can see that I have a class, or sorry, a method that looks like it's called soccer player. And this is the constructor. Kickball is a method. It doesn't happen unless you actually call it. So I can, inside of my output for kickball, I can say, I have kicked the ball. inside of my constructor, I'll make an output that says I, I am ready to get on the field. So anytime a soccer player is created, the first thing that happens is the constructor runs. Okay, so we can go into our main method, hit play, soccer player gets created the first thing that happens is he says I am ready to get on the field okay so let's walk through this so inside of my main method when I start we go to the instantiation of the instance of Bob he is going to be an instance of the class soccer player first thing that happens okay a soccer player gets made gets instantiated. Then it goes to the constructor of the class, or actually of this instance, and does everything that's inside of the constructor. Okay. Now let's say that we actually want to call that method. So we can tell Bob, hey Bob, kick the ball. Alright, so now we can walk through this again. First thing that happens is a soccer player of the name Bob gets instantiated. He does an output. I'm ready to get on the field. After that, we get to the method call to call the method kickball on the instance of Bob. So now that method kick ball gets called. So all of the functionality that exists inside of that method happens. Okay. So we can we can do a lot of different things with methods and constructors, but the thing to remember about a constructor is it functions just like a method. The only difference is that it actually gets called automatically. Okay? Now let's say that uh, we want to actually have Bob to kick the ball automatically for some reason. Okay. Now if we delete this and go inside of soccer player and we try to do the same thing, we make a call and we say, oh well we want Bob to kick the ball right away you see that the IntelliSense is not telling us that we can fill in the blanks, that it can fill in the blanks for us. And what we find is, let's go ahead and play, oh, sorry, I actually called kickball inside of kickball and that's not going to work. As a matter of fact, that will be an endless loop.
place this inside of the constructor and play again. It gets to kick ball, you get an error. Bob is not found. The thing is that inside of this class, this class has no idea what Bob is. We're creating an instance of the soccer player. So Bob does exist over here inside of main. But the soccer player class can't even see that because Bob hasn't even actually been created yet once we get to this point. It doesn't know what Bob means. So whenever you're trying to access a method or even a field inside of the actual uh, class or the actual instance of the class, there's a keyword that we use. Remember that in dot syntax, the first part of dot syntax refers to who we're trying to talk to, you know, which instance we're trying to give instructions to, or which I instance has the information that we're trying to see. If we're inside of the instance and we're trying to access information that exists inside of this instance, your first inclination would be to actually just say kick ball. But the problem is we can't do that. Not inside of instances. Okay. In other programming language you, sh you can do this, but Raptor doesn't allow you to do this. But what we can do is we can use dot syntax to indicate which instance we want to actually uh, run the method kickball on. The keyword is this. We say this instance I wanted to kick ball. We can also do the same thing if we want to access and I'll give a good indication of this. Let's say we're trying to access this number field and we want to set this number to 45 and I'll show you what happens first of all I'll move this to the top alright so we run this program I'm ready to get on the field this dot kickball so it will call the method kickball on this instance Okay, we output kick the ball. Now we get to, we're going to set number to 45. Now watch what happens. You see that? It didn't set number to 45. What it has actually done is created a local variable called number and set it equal to 45. And once it gets back out of that instance, 45, or that local variable gets destroyed, it's gone. You can't access it anyway. And the reason is because Raptor sets any local variable to be private. So main couldn't see it even if it wanted to. That's the purpose of using these fields. All right, so let's take a look at what we want to do. We're not actually going to set number equal to 45. We're going to set this dot number to 45. So we're trying to access the field called number, not make a local variable called number. We're trying to access the field number on this instance and set it equal to 45. So we'll step through, get back down to number. Here we can see that number is equal to zero on this instance. Now we can see that you can actually access this data outside now if you need to, need to. All right, so outside of an instance, you access the data with dot no with dot notation in fi from fields and from methods. So if we want to say Bob's dot number equals 33, that's fine. We use dot notation to say which instance we're talking to or we want to read information from, and then what field or method that we want to check out. But if you're inside of the class, or inside of the method, rather, you still have to use dot notations, uh, dot notation to either run a method or to access a field. 
the difference is that inside we use this dot whatever we're trying to do to access the field or method. Okay. All right, so that's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we saw how to create methods, constructors, the difference between them, and how to uh, access fields and methods from inside of an instance, and the difference between fields and local variables inside of instances. I hope this helped clear up any doubt that you may have had, and have a great day.